this brings me into the uh, something that that I've been asking myself ever since I started uh, looking into your 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 themes and topics. Uh, the the dynamics within the psychopathic groups, right? Because you mentioned something about the fact that they that that they do have some sort of social um, structure and and that they have rules and respond to each other. But um, do you know anything about what goes on, how how they act? And you you mentioned a, a bit about the whole uh, well right now about the 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 allegory of sports and and it has to take place within certain uh, boundaries. I, is there anything that you've come in contact with that that shows that there's some sort of uh, set of rule or behavior or yes yes the psychopaths can't think outside the box and it's not, that's not because of a lack of intelligence or an intellectual that you know an intellectual uh you know lack on their need or a, an intellectual deficiency it's just that they would inside that would inside that box that they, that they're in would inside their space and also the space they've trapped you in they cannot allow outside exterior influence or anything that's in terms of uh, what's the word improvisation to impinge upon that because it takes away control a very common statement made by a psychopath in a relationship is to say to the other person you know I will love you as long as you do not change but because then they then they have to actually work to, to make that you know to deal with the change so they, they develop a they develop a sort of a psych a psychological comfort zone which they trap themselves in and they also trap you in and once you remain in that in that comfort zone the psychopath is fine but if you develop interest outside that comfort zone suppose the psychopath is an atheist and you develop a spiritual insight they will become very very angry they will not like that at all and this you know if, if you don't get back into the comfort zone they will get rid of you but what about uh, psychopath to psychopath uh, behavior their own in interrelationship right uh, outside they've the no, victims they have no interest in each other they, 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 they will they will cluster they will cluster in an ad hoc way in terms of psychopaths may f rise to the top of a a corporation or a government but it's an accidental clustering and, and they will be extremely suspicious and uh, paranoid around each other but they won't work they don't do the teamwork thing they uh, they a psychopathic clustering in terms of it rising to the top of it you know the, the ceos at a boardroom of a company is is completely uh, it's completely an organic process in that the, the psychopaths didn't all band together at the bottom of the pyramid and decide let's go let's take this thing over because they they function as individuals and they have no use for other psychopaths they really don't and uh, they, they, it's always a parasite and host situation but what does happen it's the scum literally floats to the top in in entities and within situations and systems where psychopaths are generally you know c considered an asset such as a bank such as a such as a, a fine you know a, a stock a hedge fund management company but once you reach once you reach that uh, that certain level level of uh, of power or influence as a psychopath do you still have that um that dynamic because I can understand when you're talking about uh, what I would say uh, lower level psychopaths right that they might not uh, gather or, or socialize in any way but when you reach some sort of level where where it goes more to a um, more predatory than parasitical relationship then I would just expect that somehow the dynamic change a bit because when you're talking about these I would call everyday psychopaths that yeah. we might actually meet they hatch on to you as you say as a, as a parasite and then they kind of use you and abuse you and then they throw you away but what when they get to a point where they do not actually need to um, feed as often I'm almost inclined to start yes, talking yeah, about vampires. Talking about. When right. they've achieved all their goals, more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what happens then is they become, they, they don't stop. 
if they achieved all their goals as a businessman and they, they, they come across and they develop a corporation that's been incredibly successful, has re- achieved all its commercial goals and every, you know, every single, uh, everything has been attained, they will generally start going into sort of like what they would call altruistic things. They will begin, well, they're not altruistic really, they're ego-driven things. They will begin foundations. They will start becoming on the, they will join the boards of other companies. They will get involved in politics. Every psychopath is driven by this, the internal need to be the last one standing on this earth. And even if they achieve everything, and they become the, the head of the UN or the president of, Na- of the, the, NATO, the head of NATO or the head of the IMF, it's not enough. They're driven constantly by a need that can never be filled, by an itch that can never be scratched. And they will... They, they will always, always be looking for some other way of controlling a person. That's why, you know, if they were the last one left on earth, they would just throw their hands in the air and say, yes, I made it, and then die of starvation. It wouldn't matter to them. They're driven by this instinctual need to conquer all. And if they get everything they want, they'll always find new things. There's a constant need to find this uh, sort of uh, victim supply to satisfy their predatorial needs, and it never ends. It never, ever ends. The fluctuation may change. Let me give you an example. When you're younger, your sexual uh, drive is much higher. When you get older, your sexual desire decreases as you get past your, you know, your mid-40s, your 50s, and then on. It's not the same as it was when you were 19. But that doesn't mean you're not attracted to sex any less. It just turns into something else. You, you, you replace that addiction with something like uh, food or drinking or anything, really. Uh, but you're still driven by it. You just don't have the energy to do it. Likewise, a psychopath, when they begin to age, they may not have the 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 hot shot, get up and go, you know, get out there, get them tiger, uh, you know, abilities that they did when they were in their 20s. But if they're in the old people's home, they'll be doing things like stealing the other people's money, tampering with their medication, spreading rumors and lies about them. And it's just a drive for the sort of the rush that they get from doing this. They never ever change. It's it's just it's just that the the, the, the constraints put on them by their physiology may may affect their machinations and how they go about it but they will not change the predatory drive is there it's eternal it's absolute and it will never leave them